Well, today another late start getting out camping. I didn't, I didn't leave till like 6:30. <laughs> so it's, it's like 7:30. I'm over the mountain now on the other side, out on the desert side of the mountains. So I don't know what I'm gonna find out here. I just didn't want to go up in the mountains above my house right now because I've kind of been up there all summer. And it's clear full of hunters right now. And uh, I thought it might be a little more peaceful out on the desert. So hopefully one of the spots I'm familiar with is free. I can just go in there. If not, I don't know. I'm going to have to drive around. We'll just have to see how it goes, man. I had to take a little side, little side deal. So instead of getting out here about uh, 8.30 or 9 o'clock, it's 10.44 worried because I've been seeing people camped in some of the spots here. I'm coming up right here on my one of my favorite spots out here. Hopefully this camera will take a picture. There we go. You see it's kind of washed a little right here but not bad. We're still good. Oh, nobody's in here. That's good. Excellent. Excellent. And I've got a I've got a couple favorite trees over here I pitched my hammock up to just up here to the left a little bit. Let's go take a wander up here and see what we got. Yeah, this is one of my favorite camp spots out here in the San Rafael. It's right here to the left. Right be between that tree there and that tree is where I usually like to hang my hammock. And then we come up the trail here, try to be as smooth as I can be here walking. We come up the trail here and we can get into some you know, campfire pit here, campfire. Every time I come here somebody's changed it up a little. They always ruin it. I have to keep fixing it every time I come here, but I guess that's part of the thrill. Now there's the nature built. Well, nature didn't build it. Nature provided the rocks. <laughs> there's the, that's a handy table. I love that thing. I'll put all my food stuff and everything on that table. And then right there, I'll have my campfire. So I'll be in good shape right there. Yep. 11 o'clock at night, but all I'm in to do. Well, apparently my charger deal must have kicked off and my, when I was trying to charge my recording lights. So I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, Ripstop HD poncho as my hammock. So I'm going to use my Dyneema's with my uh, with my little suspension tog with my suspension keys. Well, so I just put a little I just put a little knife. You just put anything in. A little weight for gravity to work with. So when the eye comes out of the end then you got the free end, the other end, just pull that through the eye. And we're gonna just and then we're just cinching it down to give ourselves a gathered end hammock right here. But there we go, that's it. That's a gathered end. That's what I need right there. I actually moved this to a whole nother limb on the tree. You know, I just all I gotta do is unhook it. Move it wherever I want it. Get my tension about how I want it here. I just flip that, just a half turn, just a half hitch. And you just kind of pull on it, it self tightens. Well, and since this is a drive up camp, I've got so lazy since I developed the beast last, this last year. I mean, the beast just goes in automatic, man. <laughs> like, it's so comfortable. It's like, 
I'm not I'm not packing in. You know, there's no backpacking here. I got my vehicle with me. The beast is going to be used. I like how the beast also kind of pushes the kind of spreads a little bit. So when you lay in there, it's not gathered up around you as much. And this uh, HD ripstop, as well as the uh, regular HD series of ponchos, uh, when you set them up as hammocks, there's not much stretch in them because they're so strong. So, so you so you have a little bit of a flatter lay with those than you do with the with the regular ripstops and the ultralights and all that. So, another nice thing these. Uh, these Osni blankets, they come with a set of snaps on one side. So, you don't always need them, but it's kind of nice. You know, I don't, I don't really want them on both sides because I don't really want to turn this thing into a sleeping bag. But, the thing I like is I like to, I like to just snap it into the back side. Or the opposite, I'm going to get in from this side, so I like to snap it into that other side. That way I just kind of hold it all in place and if I need to get in and get out I'm not having to reshift my blanket around it you know it just sort of holds it in in place somewhat so so that way that's really nice well, you can see the end of this log all this wood that's wet an inch in this is what was in the fire pit Oh, pretty wet. I really don't like how they've, I don't know, they've piled this darn fire pit up so crazy, but I don't feel like tearing into it tonight. I couldn't stand it. I had to clean it up. Carted about 15 shovelfuls of ash out of here. I pulled quite a few rocks out of here. There's some big rocks down in there. And uh, I'm pretty good. I really don't like this side of it either because if you want to be warm, you sit in a chair right here. You want the radiant energy of the fire to come out and hit your legs and all that. If you got all this in here, it blocks the radiant energy from the getting the lower part of your body. As you can see, I couldn't resist. I had to clean up the pit and I had to remove these rocks you know it's they had stuff out here so far all the way around it's like how do you work the fire you know I like to have one side open in cooler weather so you can feel that radiant energy of the fire reflecting back out to you and being like this it's really easy for me to operate the fire to arrange things to get it started and all that enough to reach in anything. I got some ribs that they're already cooked. I just need to rewarm them. And uh, even though it's, I don't know what time it is, 11.30 probably, <laughs> I'm going to eat them. I don't care. Well, I don't know if I'll be able to start this stuff or not. Everything is, it's probably rained the last 10 days or so here. Everything is pretty wet. I could, I could split out some. I could split out some wood and stuff if I wanted to. You know, get to the, get to the heart of the wood where it's a little more dry. But sometimes you can get stuff going like this. Uh, You can keep the flame kind of on the bottom. It'll start drying out the other stuff. And sometimes you can make a go of it. I don't think this is... It's kind of getting up into there where the... Stuff's just a little damper. I really don't want to mess with it. I'm kind of lazy tonight. So, I'm going to do, I got a little piece of uh, fatwood here. 
And this is a bigger piece than I normally would use. Now this piece has been been kicking around my backpack for quite some time. And uh, probably do a little better now. Just kind of stick it down in there. Well, there we go. It's getting started now. Get that wood dried out a little bit, and we will be good to go. So, sometimes it's just a little bit of patience, you know. You you just get it started and let the fire work. And uh, a lot of times we mess with a fire more than we need to. We can just get it started and let it do its own thing. Warming up my cast iron there a little bit so I can throw my ribs in. They were warm earlier, but <laughs> I bought them from a, they just come off the barbecue at a market on my way over here. And of course now that's been uh, four or five hours ago. <laughs> so i got to warm them back up. I put a little water in the bottom so it can kind of steam a little bit. I've got some of my wood kind of that's not in the fire kind of around the fire so the radiant energy of the fire can kind of dry that out so for tomorrow or whenever I'll have some drier wood to, to work with for my fire. All right, see what we got here. Oh yeah, we got see we got steam. I just wanted to put a little water in there, a little steam to kind of re-moisten those ribs. Because you know, like I say, it's been five hours or so since they're cooked. I don't I don't want them to be dry, so I thought, well, a little water in there to kind of steam them to warm them up. That'll incorporate, incorporate all moisture in there, and I think that'll make it. You know, the nice thing about heating this stuff up with steam is it's quick. Whew. It is hot. Whew. Hot, hot, hot. Of course it's hot. It just came out of the steaming pot. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's good. Mm, very good. It's like midnight, you know what I mean? I think. I'm eating dinner at midnight. Well, like I say, I'm up camping. I make my own schedule. I love camping. It's fantastic. It's like one of the best things you can do is to go camping. Well, you know, I can't finish the night off without some mocha or something. It's going to be good right there. The clean canteen. I can heat up water at night before I go to bed. And we drop it in this fleece bag that we make. Draw that string closed. And now I've got a foot warmer, body warmer, whatever. This thing will last a good part of the night. Now this is a 40 ounce clean canteen in here. And uh, the nice, so the fleece keeps you from burning your body or feet or skin or whatever. Gives a little insulation for that, and uh, helps the uh, helps the the bottle to last longer. Well, one thing I like to do is the hood, since this is a poncho, the hood makes into a pocket when you pull it shut. So I like to take all the stuff out of my pockets and drop down into there. Because you find that if you don't do it, it'll wind up there anyway. <laughs> so tell you what, everything is just soaked. Everything is wet. 
the dew is so heavy tonight that the surface of this blanket is just wet to touch. But beautiful thing about it is this stuff is made to handle the moisture so it's not going to hurt it at all. It's going to feel comfortable and nice. And uh, so I'm excited to go to bed. It's what time is it? 2.30. Oh, man. Holy cow. <laughs> Surface of this blanket is absolutely soaking wet. <laughs> the, <clears throat> the dew is the dew is so thick last night. It's it's almost like it rained. But, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to this. This will dry off in a flash. I can see the uh, the sun here got me right in the eyeball and woke me up. Oh my gosh, I had a good sleep. I like passed out. I was gone, gone to the world. It's almost like I went into a coma. <laughs> oh, I don't. You know, I got in here and I just got. I just got absolutely comfortable. I mean, the the lay in the hammock was just flawless. And I laid here. I couldn't feel a thing. I was like I was on a cloud. And I just, pfft, I was gone. Ha! Huh. Nothing like getting a good night's sleep, I'll tell you what. The dew that was on here is, oh my gosh. <laughs> Just when I woke up, it was like I put my arm in it. There's a little, you can see a little right there. See a little of that dew. I mean, I, it was the whole thing was covered with these big, big drops of dew. I mean, it was, the whole thing is, there's some more right up here. But you see this, this fabric, I mean, just some of those areas where the sun has hit it, just in, just since I turned the camera on here. Has, acts, has dried that completely off. It's astounding. You know, so here's my setup right here. Between these trees, I've, I've camped here, oh, I don't know, half a dozen, dozen times or so. And most of the time I camp right here over this little wash. And I don't know, I love it here. It's a nice spot. My surroundings are just stunning. I mean, look what I got behind me, those red cliffs. I mean, it's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous in here. I mean, you know, how could anybody even hope to have a better spot to camp than what I've got right here? Look at that. It's looking uh, kind of to the south over here. I mean, it's just amazing. And I'm just like, I'm just like, how can I be so blessed <laughs> to to be able to camp here, you know? I feel like it's a blessing to just to camp here. I mean, it's just, oh. In fact, I'm walking around in my stocking feet and my feet are getting wet. The ground is soaked, the ground is wet. It's rained here like for, I don't know, a week or 10 days. And maybe even, I think, maybe even a little snow at times. So, it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy here. But uh, man, I love it. I spent the whole summer up in the top of the mountains this year instead of, normally I'd come out here a little bit, but I didn't and I really, oh, I missed it so much. I saw this hat and I'm like, I gotta get it, man. I gotta get it, it's, I gotta get this hat, it's real tree. Cause look, here's my, here's my Osni blanket. Real tree by real tree, man. I'm camouflaged in my own in my own blanket. <laughs> yeah, you notice this blanket too. See, it snaps. It snaps in on one side. You can snap it. I found it's kind of nice because then if I turn over a little in the night, I'm not. Since I'm not in a sleeping bag, it's nice to attach one side of the blanket to the to my hammock. That way it doesn't come off on me. 
Because that's what I was kind of run into before with the blanket is you turn over a little in the blanket in the, in the night and then the blanket would be on the ground or something, you know. Ever since I did this, beautiful, it doesn't go anywhere. And I don't need, my first one I did, I snapped on both sides. I didn't like that because it's like, well, now I'm getting back into the sleeping bag thing and I'm not a sleeping bag guy, you know. I did that. I did my time. I did my prison term <laughs> of being locked up in a mummy bag, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm in, I'm in my mid-60s. It's like I don't have to be in prison anymore. So I like the blankets. I just like them. It's just free and comfortable. Anyway, all right, I got to get, get on to it here, get the fire going, get some breakfast happening because I'm hungry because I ate at midnight. And it's, I don't know what time it is. What time is it? <laughs> it is <laughs> It is almost 10 o'clock. It's 9.51. I slept till 9.51. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, that tells you I had a comfortable sleep. Of course, I didn't go to bed till about 3 or 3.30 or something. So, All right, let's do this thing. So I like, I like to hang my hammock about like this. So my feet are either touching the ground or maybe... Maybe just slightly off the ground. Because that makes kind of like a chair sitting height. And it's it's kind of handy to be about like that. So I never lace up my boots. <laughs> I tied some knots in my shoelaces right here. So they can't pull out of the eyes. And then I just slide them on. I just do, they just slip on. I hike all over like this and everything. Works good. So here's here's camp, the campfire. I didn't have too much problem getting the fire going last night, even though the wood was just soaking wet. There's the remains of the fire. Alright, I got some juniper bark here. I'm gonna try to work it just a little bit maybe I don't know. maybe I can get it to go I'm not sure it's all everything here is so wet you gotta tease it your grandma wears combat boots you're so ugly that uh, you know Rodney Dangerfield jokes who even knows who he is anymore right I do cuz I'm old but so anyway, you just try to break up the fibers a little if you can, you know, like right there. And then... A little something left over from the fire last night. You got to leave a little bit of gap between this coal and the and this bark because the bark's got some dampness to it and you don't want to put the coal out by touching it right on the bark. And it's good to let it let it uh, sit here and uh, percolate. I call it percolate. Because you got all that heat in there. But I know that I got enough really to get this thing going. So... I don't mind blowing on it once in a while and just let that heat just sit there a little bit and let it kind of evaporate some of the moisture out of there.
And usually when you put it down, you might want to kind of fluff it up a little like I did there. And then I can start stacking a little bit of some stuff around it here. Something that'll kind of catch when it gets going. The nice thing, as long as I see a good strong stream of smoke coming out of there, I know I'm good because I'm trying to get some of these smaller stuff in here. Something to kind of catch the flame when I get it going here. But see, it's even though it, a lot of people think, oh, you think, oh, you got to get that flame going immediately. You don't have to. In fact, sometimes and it's it's an advantage not to just let it sit there and percolate a little. And as long as it's smoking good, it's actually working. It's actually doing work. It's it's getting itself hotter, you know. So. You know, don't think, oh, I gotta hurry and I've got it to this point, I gotta hurry and get it flaming. No, you don't. It's actually an advantage just to do what I'm doing right here. The heat in there is building up more and more. It's drying out more of the that heat's drying off more moisture. Just while I'm doing this, you know. I'm actually I'm actually working on the fire right now. Well, I'm just cramming all this junk in there. My famous debris fire lay, you know, just throw crap in there. That's how I, that's how I roll. Okay. So, you know, we just get some stuff in there like that. And then maybe I'll drop my camera down a little. And then just maybe got to watch the sun angle here. Now I get down here blowing it. So see what I did by waiting a minute and letting it just kind of go? Then when I blew on it, that whole thing became an inferno. Now I got a fire. Nothing to worry about. That's how you do it. That's how it's done, peacock style, right there. Well, here's some uh, nice Mormon tea right here. Or squaw tea, Indian tea. There's a lot of different names. I grew up, my grandparents got me into this stuff. And I got, I brought a, I carry a quart bottle now in my <coughs> cooking supplies. And, uh, oh, this is probably going to be just delicious tea because this, this stuff here is just, it's just uh, lush. <laughs> this is just lush for a hair out of the desert. Oh, man. I'm going to take more than what I need for doing a quart of tea. Take yeah, a lot of times this stuff you just snap it off. It's kind of brittle. But with all the rain we've had on the desert in the last month or so, kind of off and on and more in the last couple weeks, but anyway, that's enough for a fair amount of it. I only need about a handful for a quart of tea, but so I got enough for several here. I'm gonna take some home with me. I got a little more, I get a little more tea in there than I really need for a quart. This might be a little on the strong side. <laughs> but, yeah, what the heck. I can always dilute it a little bit if I need to. Isn't that pretty right there? So, I'll just lightly put the lid on. and I just think that looks pretty right there. That's going to make a nice tea right there in about four hours. I've got me a nice fire going for coals. 
Uh, I found me some good wood to get into there. I've been out flying my drone a little bit <laughs> while this has been going. So i just tinkering around a little. So that comes down and we'll get some breakfast here. So anyway, there's my sun tea, Indian tea being made right there, squaw tea. Thought I'd set it right in the middle of those cactus just for effect. Well, I got to stoke the fire back up again because I've been hiking around for about an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> Exploring, I can't stop myself. I mean, if you've watched many of my videos, you know I do this almost every time. Time to get the bacon on. Let's do it. Gonna have me a good brunch here. I can't call it breakfast anymore because it's afternoon. I've been busy walking around, hiking around, exploring, doing what I always do out here. Looking for treasures, you know what I mean? There we go. That'll do me right there. Well, yeah, gotta love the bacon. Now yeah, just a two or three eggs, scramble them up. That ought to do the trick here. A little coarse sea salt on there. And then some pepper. Got a plenty of pepper. A lot of pepper. There we go, that's good. All right, the eggs are done. Got some poppy seed bagels. I'm gonna just kind of toast those a little bit and put it all together. Well, there's my bagels. Take about half the egg and put on there. Some strips of bacon. that put me some cheese on there should have got some pre-sliced cheese I had to slice it myself imagine that and then put a lid on it right there that's what we're talking about well let's see if I can wrap my mouth around this I have kind of a tendency sometimes to make stuff so thick I can't get my mouth on it That's gonna hit the spot right there. That's well, something different. I mean, I'm always doing pancakes, French toast, bacon, eggs, you know. I just wanna do something different for breakfast, even though it's afternoon. It's probably one o'clock now. <laughs> this tastes pretty good though. I got to say, it's going to work for me today. Pretty happy about it. <laughs> ah, it's just fun being up camping. I don't really care much. You know. As long as I'm up here, I'm good. It's about the size of it. <laughs> well, I'm getting ready to do my tea. I just realized I'm going to need a funnel pour it out of that bottle into something else. So, 
We'll make this one in some kind of crude fashion here. There, I got a funnel. Doesn't look pretty, but it'll work. See how the T is doing. That's looking good. That's about the coloration you want. Kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, kind of a pinkish kind of amber. Right there. All right, let's go do this. All right. So I'm going to put the tea in this bottle. I got to put it through a funnel. I've got a little filter. Last time I used a t shirt, but I picked up this little filter at a Chinese restaurant supply place. There we go, right there. You gotta love that, man. Looks like gas. <laughs> I'm make I'm I'm distilling gasoline out here, man. <laughs> I'm glad it tastes better than gas. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you how I post stuff to the internet, to Instagram, when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, out in the desert. This is how it's done. Watch carefully. This is how it's done. Well, that's how it's done, right there. That's the deal. That's how we do things in my world. Okay, it's siesta time. Take a little snooze. You know, one of the fun things about camp is, you know, don't get yourself so scheduled out and keyed up that you just don't have a second, you know. I've been all over the place. I've been down the canyon. I've been trying to explore, look for different places I can go, stuff like that. You know, I've hiked around a good bit today. You know, done stuff around camp. It's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking a break. And by golly, I'm going to do it right now. Just going to take my shoes off. Sightseeing airplane. And I've got the shade now here in the afternoon. This is like the perfect time to take just a little break. <laughs> 